Just tell me whenever and I'll be there. You are my love, you are my high, and we will never, ever, ever be apart. Are we an item? Don't quit playing. We're just friends. What are you saying? Say so there's another and look right in my eyes. My first love broke my heart for the first time and now it lies. about to cross over the Canadian USA border. Let me show you guys. Isn't this crazy? Let me get off the phone before they say something to me. Anyways, I'll catch up with you guys later. I just passed customs and now I'm in. Let's move closer. British Columbia, Canada. Let's go. So it's officially October the 30th, 2023, which means that it's officially my birthday. Happy 29th birthday to me. The real turn up is gonna be for my 30th birthday because 29 is such a dusty ass number. So I first of all wanna wish every other Scorpio out there born on, the, on October the 30th, like me, a very happy birthday. I am currently catching up on elite thing um which i should have already been finished with season seven you know a while back ago but i don't know it's not like seasons one two and three where i could have been watched binge watched it in like one day a couple of hours and then go back and rewatch that shit three thousand times no offense to like the new creators the new actors y'all are amazing uh Y'all motherfuckers is nasty as fuck in this show, but I mean, I kind of like it. I mean, I'm a Scorpio, so, ah! But anyway, um, yeah. Happy birthday to us. Um, I'm gonna catch back up with you guys later. So, essentially, I wanted to see what it was like if I moved up here. So, thoughts was that I was going to go to college up here to take my BS in. But um, my path for that is a little different considering that I have a, already have a BSBA. So, most likely I won't be taking my BS in here. Um, and then... I do plan on either buying a house here um, or eventually moving up here. I don't know. I might buy a house up here in Canada either before I become a CRNA or after I become a CRNA. I don't know. And things are still up in the air. It's not official. Um, but, I mean, I just wanted to see what Canada was going to be like. So, right now I'm about to go to a, I think it's a Japanese uh, garden. And I just want to like hang out there. It's still my birthday today. If y'all didn't know what today is. Um, still October the 30th. It's just later on in the day. Or actually it's early in the day. So, I will see you guys when I get there. So, I got here at the Japanese garden that I wanted to go to and then I realized that I kind of don't want to go in so it's too many people like it might just be me it might be the fact that I'm 29 and I feel old as fuck but I yeah my decision about going in was it changed super quick like super duper um but I figured since I have you guys right here with me real quick we can have a little discussion you know um, and I think the one thing that I wanted to talk about was Taylor Swift's 1989 Taylor's version album that just came out, um, which I'm pretty sure everybody has been keeping up with. It came out October the 27th and I listened to it. The only thing I was going to do a review on this, like I was going to do like a whole ass review of like 
every track on there, but that would have been long as fuck. And I feel like I be talking and people don't be listening. And then also, it's just... I go way too in depth with shit since I have so much experience in music. Like I am myself a songwriter, a music producer, a lyricist, a poet. Like I'm all of that. And so, so really and truly, I said, fuck the review, the actual review. And then I'm just gonna make this like a small review real quick. And I think the one thing that I have to say is that the album obviously still sounds great but one thing that lacks in it especially um with the maturity of her voice which is not a bad thing is the emotional um death she provided in the first album um she became a very good businesswoman um and the way that she matured her voice and was able to basically re-promote an album that had already been released um and i will also say that it's not bad maturing your voice and losing somewhat of that emotional depth but um there is a huge difference well not a huge but there is a subtle difference in how her music used to be and how her music is now and honestly I don't blame Taylor Swift I really blame the world I think when Taylor wanted to be emotional and dramatic and no offense but that's what makes an artist an artist me being an artist I would know that it's this tapping into emotions the ability to portray emotion through song through lyrics through instrument through anything is what makes us a, a great artist but when Taylor Swift wanted to do it back then a lot of people made fun of it. They thought she was over dramatic. They didn't understand why every time she won an award, it was a surprise to her or why her lyrics were all so um, personal and so emotional. But now when you listen to her music, you don't kind of get that emotional flavor that was once there. And it's definitely because the world was telling her, like, you kind of need to go the fuck up. And in a sense, yes, we all do kind of need to grow up especially grow up in our own artistry but the after effects of that is usually exactly what I'm talking about now which is the absence of emotions growing up usually means that you kind of just ha- don't have you know an emotional reaction to certain things or you're not able to go you're able to tap into emotions but you also see it as irrelevant to the situation um and so the world telling Taylor Swift to grow up was not only a good thing but it also ended up being a bad thing I mean the good that came out of it was that we got a really great remake of an album um and we got a really great businesswoman but we also don't get the emotional depth that she used to have so I know I'm supposed to be listening to Canadian music because I'm in Canada, which is why I sang that one Justin Bieber song at the beginning of the vlog. But because Ryan Gosling is a Canadian actor and this movie just came out in which and it had a song in which Billie Eilish ate that shit up. Like she ate it so she ate and left no motherfucking crumbs. Like This song was so emotional that a lot... It had, like, a lot of people crying and shit in the movie theaters. Um, The good thing about this song is I actually might end up doing a full cover of it and releasing it on YouTube. Um, But for right now, I'm just going to be singing a little piece of it. Because we're in Canada, so we got to be Canadian. Even though this is not a Canadian song. But y'all still about to enjoy though.
Guys, I know this is so corny, but I've never been to an Ikea before. And I want to go inside of it and see what it's like. And this is how you know I'm getting old, because I don't even want to party. Well, I might party for my 30th, but it's going to be a different party. But I care more about furniture, getting my bills paid, what my career is going to be, what my next degree is going to be, how much money I have in my bank account, my marriage, when I have children. I care more about that than I actually care about anything else and that's how you know I'm getting older so I want to go into this Ikea real quick hold on I'm about to show you guys I'm about to go into this Ikea real quick is it open why it look like that hold on because Canadians y'all low-key be eating that shopping experience up though low-key Cause I be watching Canadian. I have a couple of Canadians that I watch on YouTube because I love watching them. And um, <clears throat> sometimes they be going like to IKEA and shit. And I was like, I've never been, so I want to go. And so let me see. I'm about to show you guys. I'm about to turn the camera around real quick. Furniture store. First of all, anybody out here who's like, why are you pronouncing Ikea like that? Because it's pronounced that way, the fuck? Y'all motherfuckers is retarded as hell. Like, like low-key, y'all be pronouncing... Americans will pronounce everything wrong and tell you that you pronouncing it wrong. Like, bitch, hold on. Like, wait till I get motherfucking uh, parked real quick. Because there's people walking. I'm not trying to run them over. But I mean, I feel like it's plenty of these um videos on YouTube. Uh where brands are pronounced correctly and I feel like I shouldn't have to release one. But we finna go through a little bit of brand pronunciation because y'all motherfuckers is retarded. Like y'all you who's retarded as hell. It's pronounced Ikea, not Ikea, not Ikea, not, I, I don't know what the fuck y'all be pronouncing that shit. It's pronounced Givenchy, not Javinki, not Gavinki, or whatever the fuck y'all be saying. It's pronounced Thara, not Zara. Like, learn Spanish from Spain before you speak anything. It's pronounced... What else do y'all be pronouncing incorrectly? Oh, it's pronounced Adidas, not Adidas. Like, learn German. Like, the fuck? It's pronounced Nike, not Nike. However, this is... Okay, this one right here, I'm going to give it a pass. You know why I'm going to give it a pass? It's because Nike, the store, did already put... They already tell you that they inspired their brand from... You know, the Greek goddess Nike, uh, Nike, right? But it's pronounced Nike in, in any language outside of Greek. So, this would I give it a pass because I don't think they should go by the Greek goddess's name anyway, first of all. And then second of all, it just, Nike is, it sounds better for the brand anyway. I prefer Nike over Nike too, as far as like a brand name, but the goddess name is Nike and the, the brand name is Nike. But because the brand is therefore, you know, inspired by the Greek goddess, just letting y'all know it's really pronounced Nike, like learn Greek. Anyway, I'm in Ikea and I'm not about to buy anything here because I don't live in Canada. Where the fuck I'm going to take this shit at? You feel me? Plus, I be bougie when I go furniture shopping. And I said bougie. But really and truly, I mean bourgeoisie because I am part French. But I be bourgeoisie when I go for, uh, shopping for furniture. So, I don't need to be out here spending hella money on some shit. I probably won't even be able to take home. You feel me? Like, let me chill out with that shit. But I heard Ikea got... um. 
a restaurant in here. I'm super picky with my food, so I'm probably not gonna eat here, but I do want to see what this shit look like. You feel me? I don't know, do I wanna take y'all inside with me or do I wanna just go inside by myself? This is a big ass store. Plus, y'all probably already done seen what's in Ikea anyway, so. I would just get back on here when I get back on here. You feel me? I'm back. So, it is officially, hold on. It is officially 9 o'clock here on the West Coast, which means it is 12 o'clock there in New York or on the East Coast. Which means that the order of Hakati has officially released on iTunes, Spotify, and other digital stores. Um, go check it out. I mean, I'm not going to go into detail because you literally can just go to my website and go into detail. Or you can just go listen to it. Either or. You feel me? What I will say, though, is that it was the coolest... Um, I guess EP because it is three songs, so it's not really an album. It was the coolest EP that I've ever produced. Um, mostly because I took a step back from pop music, from dance music, and I kind of went back to my roots. If any of body knows me, they would know that I started off with classical music. I am professionally trained on the tenor and alto saxophone, and I learned how to play the piano uh, Piano at like the age of 13 by myself. I'm not completely professional on the piano, but I would say I'm moderately trained on it. Either way, I'm been in band since like the age of 12, I think is when we started. So band music, orchestra music, all of that was once something that I was heavily invested in until I kind of realized that that shit was for nerds. So I kind of went back to my roots for this uh, EP because I featured sounds that is definitely like more or orchestrated and not really mainstream for pop music or dance or trap. So I will say it was the most interesting, more fun. I kind of like going back to, like, classical music because it's something that, like, people just don't um, appreciate anymore. Like, the amount of work and the way that composers used to just put things together is just crazy. But anyways, I wanted to move off that topic because I wanted to talk about Another song that I had recently released this month, I think in October, um, yeah, October, mm, September 11th, sorry, I thought it was October, but September 11th, I released a song called C'est Soi, um, by Dentois, and the reason I wanted to talk about that is because I am in Canada, and as many of you guys know, some of them speak French here, and, um, there's a line... And um, there's a line in Siswa that, let me look up the lyrics real quick. I mean, I know the lyrics by heart, but I don't want to say anything off-putting. So, um, there's a line, <laughs> there's a line in Siswa where I say, Siswa ne se pas de ni désir faire, ni se te l'offre dans l'hémisphère, ni brasons certain règles. There you go. I say a line called, I say, new brows on certain regular, eh? And the reason I wanted to go into detail about that was because it all started off when I joined the military. My MOS was 25 Quebec. Um, and eventually, um, when everybody started asking me what my MOS it was, as I, you know, stayed in the military, I would eventually start responding in French and I would say, Vont cinq, que <laughs> And, um, sorry, my bad. Quebec is a province in, Can in Canada. And there they speak, um, Quebecois, or some of them speak Quebecois. 
But so when I was okay, if any okay, so let me first by saying any song by Dem Twine is most likely written like years ago. Um, that's because he's a mainstream artist. I read his songs years ago and then I take a really long time to perfect it, structure it, you know, I have everything perfect before hit the release. So since while was like many of Dem Twine other song it was written a long ass time ago. But recently, most recently, actually, I added um, a Canadian sound to it. So if you look at the lyrics, I say, New bras en certain regle. And then I say, eh? So, New bras en certain regle. Like that. And it's making fun of the... Well, not making fun of... I guess I was inspired by the way Canadians say, eh? And I knew that they speak Quebecois. And I just want to believe that even those who speak Quebecois still have like a Canadian accent or Canadian way that they say certain shit. And I was trying to write the lyrics to this. And I didn't want to make this, the word regle um, Creole French. And so I basically added it to like complete the lyrics. So it's regle like that. But anyway, I really like the lyrics to Siswa because I just feel like it so matches the attitude of the French people. Like, especially when I go, pas ton putain d'esclave. Siswa ne sait pas de nous, de comment vivre. Parce que nous sommes jeunes, nous sommes libres. Pas ton putain d'esclave. Anyway, I'm finished. So, um, <laughs> that was my little conversation about music so thus far um tomorrow is halloween can y'all believe it's still today is still th the 30th like i feel like i've been up for a millennium um mostly just trying to get everything situated for the release of the order of hakati um ep so it could look really good up on release on the website and everything but i think i'm gonna see you guys tomorrow um I might be doing a couple of things for Halloween. I don't know. We'll see. I might go to like a little event or something. <laughs> I don't celebrate Halloween. Like, no offense, but let children is between like the age of seven and 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 seventeen do that shit. I feel like once you turn eighteen. You sh you could still celebrate a uh, Halloween, but like keep it like mature. You know what I mean. And then once you turn twenty five, like Halloween is no longer a thing. Like we mostly just we might do a small little get together with our friends and turn up a little bit. Most of us just really put on a good ass scary movie and call it a good day. Like if you still celebrate Halloween after the age of twenty five, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, baby, but that shit died a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> it is not coming back to life. But yeah, apparently I'm in a Canadian superstore. Is that what it says? Real Canadian? Hold on, can y'all see that? Real Canadian superstore. Anyway, super nice. It's big as fuck. And America, I'm gonna need y'all to upgrade. Y'all need some Canadian shit. Honestly, one thing I've noticed when you travel abroad is that is that going into like stores that you know I don't know like for an example when I travel I go into McDonald's and I figure out based off their McDonald's how good the McDonald's is how good the country is gonna be and as you can tell American McDonald's is dusty and the country is dusty I went to Korean McDonald's and their McDonald's was super duper 10 down to 10. Like it was fire. You know what I mean? I have not went to a Canadian McDonald's, um, but I've seen the outside of it and I just imagine that it's going to be really good. So it is Halloween night and I am still in Canada. Because that bitch, no, I'm just playing. Um, first of all, <laughs> Canada, y'all pop firecrackers on Halloween, and I feel like that is so ghetto. Like, 
I mean, celebrate the way you want to celebrate. Like, by all means, do what y'all want to do. But I think in America, I don't know. I feel like all, all we do in America is just, like, hang out with friends. Some of us go trick-or-treating. Most of us, like, go to parties. And obviously the children go trick-or-treating. You know what I mean? But, like, popping firecrackers? Hell no. We don't do that shit on a Halloween. Oh, no. But then again, this is a different country, so... I don't know, like, what is, what, why, why firecrackers on Halloween? I need to know that, first of all. I just, I want to know the answer to that, like, real talk. Like, give me the answer to that. But anyway, um, yeah, so I just came back from an event, uh, and a Halloween event, which was kind of like a mixture of, like, a pumpkin showcase, a small party. I don't know. It was kind of fun. It was all right. Um, I didn't film it because I didn't want to. Like, this vlog is not for that. I don't usually like to put private parties or private affairs on camera. But that's just me. Um, tomorrow I leave. So I didn't want to stay out that late. Um, if I could have, I would have went to like an hour away. I don't know why, but like movie theaters in Vancouver is nowhere near the city. And I want to believe that. And that's the reason why it's because Vancouver is the city. And like, um, well, I guess in America, most um, most movie theaters are in the city. I don't know. They don't have an AMC here. But then again, I'm also used to knowing that most theaters are not in the city. So it's like not new to me, but also I'm kind of, I don't know. Like I've seen both. I think it depends on obviously which state in America. But yeah, like no, it's like very little movie theaters around here. And I was going to go see Saltian because I've already seen The Exorcist, which they did so good on. Like. The Exorcist movie, I feel like... First of all, I want people to quit comparing it to the first one. Don't compare it at all. Just watch the new one and watch it like it is. I feel like it was good. The introduction to two um, characters being possessed is fucking... Like, it's just... They they ate that up. Um, The ending had me shook. I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't expecting that ending, but I think... That is what made it good, is that we didn't get what we expect. It was definitely not predictable, and that's what I liked about the new Exorcist. I'm ready for the next one in 2025, I think, is when it comes out. Anyway, um, but yeah, I was going to go see the movies, but all the movie theaters are, like, nowhere near where I'm staying. And particularly, really, Vancouver. I think the one that was per, uh, playing Saw 10 is, like, an hour away. And I was like, I got to get up early in the morning so I can go back to America. And I'm not trying to stay up that late. But speaking of going back, um, I don't know. I feel like this is where I want to end my vlog. Because, yeah. So, Happy Halloween. Hold on. Let me see if I can get... Like, y'all see that in the air? My windshield is so dirty. Like, they're literally popping firecrackers here in Canada. <laughs> I'm not saying it's ghetto. Um, but it's ghetto. <laughs> I mean, I wonder what y'all don't, well, y'all don't celebrate 4th of July here because it's not your holiday, but yeah, anyways, I'm on my way back to, uh, America tomorrow, and I was gonna film myself, like, crossing the border, but I feel like I'm not, that's so extra, so just know that, yeah, tomorrow's my last day, so I'm gonna end the vlog here, um, I didn't show that much, but it's okay. Like, I got to talk to you guys, and that's really all I wanted to do. So, I'll see you guys later.